from eight years locked up in a federal prison to being locked in with his family during a pandemic. One year ago this week marks the date former Governor Rob Lagojevich arrived back home in Chicago. And WGN's Julie Unruh was the first reporter to speak with Blagojevich after President Trump commuted his sentence and let him out of prison. And now WGN is speaking with him first one year later. Rod Blagojevich makes it clear while the rest of us may have felt like prisoners in our own homes during the pandemic, for him, a newly released federal prisoner, surrounded again by his wife and two daughters, it was an incredible reunion and a great joy. Telling us he has no remorse about the past, the disgraced politician turned private citizen, shared with WGN what he's been doing since his release and what's next. Maybe the dumbest thing I ever did was not wearing the White Sox hat in 2005 when they went to the World Series. It was really a dumb, dumb thing. It was the wrong thing to, to not do. I should have wore the hat, and I regret that. So this is my way of making amends to the Sox fans and to their great owner, Jerry Reinsdorf. At 64, Rod Blagojevich is making amends with Sox fans these days, but not with Illinois voters or anyone else he may have wronged during his political rise that ended with a fall from grace and time in a federal pen. Home at last, he's still running seven to eight miles, three to four days a week. For him, huffing and puffing as he weaves his way through the Chicago neighborhoods, even in sub-zero temperatures, is liberating. It just running through the streets again, just running through the neighborhoods, just running at home is, is an amazing blessing after you've been gone and you've been running in circles for eight years. So yeah, it's great. And I, and I run through the streets and everything looks so much prettier to me now that I'm home in Chicago. My hometown. He is still as chatty and upbeat as ever. It's nice to see nice you, to my see friend. You. Nice to see you. Nice to see yes. you. But looking back, he calls his eight years in a federal prison the loneliest period of his life. Yeah, that loneliness and that sadness is a constant companion. You, there's a hole in your heart. You feel it. Fast forward to 2020, when Rod Blagojevich left the big house, headed for his own house. WGN was there to speak with him first. A bit shocked, dazed, and silver-topped after all that time, the just-released ex-governor shook some hands in the Denver airport, said he looked forward to a banana split, and instantly thanked the president, who set him free. It's been a long time. I'm profoundly grateful uh, to President Trump and... It's a profound and everlasting gratitude. Today, his feelings toward former President Trump are no different. So of course, I am a Trumpocrat. I think I speak for Patty and me and for our two daughters. We'll forever be grateful to President Trump for, for what he did for, for us, how he liberated me. Speaking to us from his north side home, the ex-governor marks one year since his release from prison by quarantining. He and his whole family have tested positive for COVID-19. While there's been a lot of unexpected togetherness over the past year, now this, they're getting to know one another again, he says. You know, I had a chance to spend my first Christmas at home in nine years. It was uh, simple and sweet and perfect. And uh, this is, in fact, uh, my first Valentine's Day at home in nine years, and this is nice as well. He feels good, his family's getting through it, and he isn't letting the virus get him down. Hey, it's Rod Blagojevich. I'm very excited to connect with you on Cameo. Since his release, Blagojevich has been making a living, he says, by signing on with the celebrity app Cameo. He's nearing 2,000 messages. Paid $80 for each one. Sure beats the $5.25 an hour he made in prison. It's a reminder to me of all the good that there is in the world, how there's so much more love in the world than there is hate, how people care about one another. Um, and how even though there is wickedness and evil, there's a lot more good. He tells me he's doing some consulting for businesses too. Even gave a virtual commencement speech for inmates to entrepreneurs. And believes in the work of I Am a Gentleman, donating his suits that he wore as governor of Illinois to young men trying to enter the workforce. But his mission these days remains focused on criminal justice reform. I'm a living example of being forced to be in prison on a big lie. But I truly believe I was a great governor. Not only does he maintain the justice system failed him, but it continually fails men of color. He says he experienced it firsthand as an inmate. It's a broken system, it's a racist system. Uh, it is the practice, not the, it is the rule, not the exception to over-sentence young black men to uh, prohibitively long prison sentences that deny them any chance at a second chance. So what's next? 
perhaps a book on the topic, some motivational speaking gigs, and always more time spent with family. Because after his arrest as a sitting governor back in 2008, Blagojevich didn't know if his family would still be around when he got out of prison. Within days of that, the Las Vegas odd makers had something, had the odds at something like nine to one that Patty was going to leave. That are close to you and that Patty stayed and famously fought for her husband's release all those years he was behind bars. The pandemic has left so many of us sort of running in place, but not Rod Blagojevich. Prison time has taught him how to wait more patiently for the cloud of the virus to lift. Until then, just he and his running shoes creating a new path in the fresh snow, looking forward, never back. I truly believe my best days are ahead of me. Now to an update on the rest of the family. Rob Blagojevich's oldest daughter, Amy, graduated from Northwestern and already has her master's degree. His youngest daughter, Annie, is heading to college in the fall. His wife, Patty, is still working in the insurance industry, running her own shop these days. As for his only sibling, Robert Blagojevich, who also stood trial with him back in 2010, Rod didn't want to get into their personal relationship with me. He only shared that he understood his brother's anger and bitterness over their history and politics together. Julie Unruh, WGN News. Hmm. Fight the story. I can't believe it's yeah, been a year I already. Know. Wow. Time flies.